Hello and welcome to the third in the series of three rainbow pictures that I have released this month. I, my name is Paul, I'm a dyspraxic fluid artist, um, which means that I do art a little bit differently to the other fluid artists, just because I've had to adapt various techniques so that they work for me. I'll be talking through videos well, through what I'm doing as I'm creating the various pieces of art. I apologise for the background noise today. I'm having to record in record the audio, at least, in my living room. And cars rudely keep going past. And you may hear the pitter-patter of raindrops on the windows as well. Um, so I'm dyspraxic, which means it affects my coordination. So... I do art a little bit differently to other people. As I say, this is the third rainbow piece that I've done, and I'm really looking forward to showing you what I managed to get together. So without further ado, let's go. So I have a uh, 30 centimeter by one meter canvas. I've already spray painted it silver, and I'm just at this point um, pouring on the silver paint. That's going to be the base for this piece. Um, this piece is a bit different to a lot of other fluid art pieces. As in, I don't want to go over the edge. So with this, I haven't put down as much paint as you'd expect. And as you can see, I'm blowing the base out but I'm not blowing it over the edge because I don't want the colours to slip over the edge. I'm not letting my base coat slip over the edge either. The doing it this way means that you can control where your paint goes a lot better. The reason that I ended up doing this is I did four paintings in the night and I didn't have space for the um for this one to dry somewhere where it was okay for it to, for paint to drip over the edge so i preferred the design as it's going to turn out anyway um but i was very careful not to let the base as i say go too near the edge the reason that you have a base coat on a lot of fluid pores is that allows paint to slip over the top and by reducing where that paint is, it means you can control where your main colours go a lot easier. This is also the reason why I'd spray painted the um, the canvas silver. So I've just there started putting the colours down in the rainbow order, and I'm layering them on top of each other because I want them to mix in together. Unfortunately, the camera angle just did not come out on this piece, I did not realise. Um, so you've got the very edge on each side you're not going to see. Um, well, you can see I've made a little drip of the yellow there, but it's fine. Um, so I've got yellow-green there, which is a gorgeous colour. The yellow was just a mix of various yellows. Um, I needed a bit more yellow in with the green just for it to mix to get the effect at the end. Um, it was cadmium, orange hue, and a transparent vermilion was the red. And this blue is brilliant blue, as you can see. It's a brilliant colour, and it's actually quite bright as well. I do love it so, so, so much. Um, well, that was the... Um, Thalo Turquoise mix, and now it's the brilliant blue that I'm bringing up. Um, I love how those two colours, how this just mixes in. And then this one is a dark cobalt, a uh, permanent dark cobalt, which is a glorious dark purple colour. If I was doing this on a black background, I'd have added some white in because it's semi-transparent, but this one mixes in with the silver so it actually pops out quite nicely. 
So now that I'm happy with the colours and how they've been layered, I am mixing in uh, Deco Art Extreme Sheen Pearl, which is a white colour. The reason that I'm putting this in is it creates a cell reaction, but not too much. And it's going to give the colours that are already on an, a metallic a bit of a pop. And then here we are with the spreading the paint out, spraying them out. Um, almost going over the edge with the yellow there and the green. Um, mixing those colours in so they mix out a bit more. I'm just doing an initial blow over of everything and then I'm going to go back in to add in some more detail as you will see in a couple of minutes and as you can see the turquoise and the blue are mixing in beautifully there and the blue and the purple just are popping out I, I, I just love I love the rainbow colour scheme as it is, but oh, it is, it, it's just a gl glorious palette to work with, and yeah. So at this point I am just assessing the composition, looking at what I like, what I don't like, and if there's anything else that I need to put in, anything that I need to change, and I, there you have the blue roll which saves lives and saves paintings because that yellow bit in the corner just did not work. It took focus. So use the blue roll, take the paint up, blow out a little more and it should work fine. And then I added, <laughs> this is the interesting bit on the thing. So you're not going to see what I'm doing on the edge with the red. Oh well. Um, so, as far as you're concerned at the moment, dear viewers, you're just seeing some stuff at the edge. You will see the final result that I will. I'll do a picture at the end of the... I'll edit that in. Um, and here, there was a silver gap there that I just didn't like. So, I came in with some extra yellow and a bit of green just to get those colours in a bit more and I'm fiddling slightly with some other colours that have been put in and just blowing that out just to give a bit more of the green that had been swallowed up a bit by the yellow and the turquoise so I wanted that pop of colour to show more and I really wasn't happy with how the yellow went right to the edge and none of my other colours had. Um, so again, the blue roll that saves paintings and saves lives. Um, I came in and lifted that out. Um, it does make it a little bit of a mess just at this point while it's drying. But going over with some extra silver paint you really can't in the end you can't tell that the yellow was there um not gonna lie there are going to be some touch-ups that i'll be doing the painting still drying um once it's dried i know i'm gonna have to go back and touch up the edges slightly just to make that little bit work um Fluid art, it doesn't always just come out amazingly. A lot of times you have to go out, go back, you touch up your edges, you add extra details in. It's a bit, it's the process of making art and making the world a lot more beautiful. So, yeah. And then again, I had a little bit of a spill with an orange dot at the edge there, so I'm just cleaning that part up. I think it's important to have these bits in here because you can see honestly what we do and when you're trying this or doing this 
you can know that people that have been doing this for a long time, I've only been doing this for just over a year, um, we make mistakes, we have to go and we have to change things up. And it's fine. It, it's how you do it. You're the artist at the end of the day, and you're creating something there. So, and then at this point I've got my heat wand, which is a kind of heat gun, um, going over, and that, as a dyspraxic person, I cannot use a propane um, creme brulee torch, so I have the heat gun that I go over the paint with just to burst the air bubbles. But that is the... And here is the dried result. I love it. The silver between the acrylic paint and spray paint is slightly different, but I like that it just looks a bit lighter around where I layered the acrylic paint on. This is such a gorgeous painting. Um, the light's behind me so you can see the um, shadows coming in, but seriously, look at that. So gorgeous how the colours merge into each other. My favourite bit is here. The cells that you can see on there. And then just shifting hands. Going into the yellow and the green. I'm really glad I added the extra green in there. So that it came out. And then just the plain yellow there. The silver overpowering it a little bit, and then going through the orange, through to the red. So, yeah. There you have it. And the noise in the background was something just falling off my desk. So, yeah. Love it.